All right, y'all, I'm Andre Thompson, a privileged bow hunter. Back at y'all one more time. You see, I got my gear out today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go to a bunch of different ranges. Uh, I'm, first, I'm gonna get a baseline. I'm gonna see what my speed is out of the chronograph right in front of me. And then I'm gonna step out to a couple different extended ranges to see how much speed drop off I get. I'm gonna share it with y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, and subscribe before we get into the video. Let's go. Y'all mind if we fit? I mean, no, you don't have to move. You really don't have to move. <laughs> All right, we'll be quick at this one then. All right, first I'm gonna go ahead and get the baseline of what the bow is actually doing, what speed is shooting straight out of the bow. And then we'll move to the further ranges to see uh, what speed the arrow is still at, like right before it makes impact with the target. So I've always kind of wondered this. People always talk about how much your arrow slows down and all that good stuff. So why not test it? I don't care where this hits on the target. I just need to register a speed. All right, so we got 285. Pretty sure the arrow speed is around, or the arrow weight is around 560. I'm gonna shoot another one, just make sure that wasn't like a erroneous output. Actually, is that buried? Now I'm not, nope. Not, to spend, not about to spend all that time digging these arrows out of that 20 yard bell. Okay, this target has set me up, this 50 yard target over the years has ruined plenty of my arrows because it gets soft over there in that middle spot. And there's that like steel part of the frame that holds up the target. And like, if you catch that, if you catch a target at the wrong time, when people just been hammering the middle, boom, there goes the end of your, at least your fill point. Yeah, this, so this is super interesting because the target set up at 50.6. Um, out of my bow, I don't think it's the biggest deal, but when you're like, if your bow is like 240 feet per second straight out of the bow, um, you know, it just, it's something to note. If you can spring for the more accurate rangefinder, then good. If not, you know. Then do what you do. I, I mean, I just got this rangefinder, um, and I've been fine without it. So, all right, 50 yards. Okay, I'm good with that. Y'all can see I'm nervous, so I'm shooting a little high, trying to not hit my chronograph. If that didn't register the speed, then I'll take a little bit more risk. Well, this is cool, guys. Like, aside from the data gained. It's nice to have little things set up like this where like there's a little bit at stake. Um, especially when there's people here at the range watching, like, can you imagine all the oohs if somebody here, like that arrow just full pass through on my chronograph? But it's good because it helps you. I feel like it helps you um, when you get in front of an animal. So here we go at 50 yards. My speed is 270 feet per second. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I've shot, I've shot this same arrow pretty much with the, uh, out of my bow at 70 pounds. And I was probably around 270 feet per second straight out of the bow. And the arrow survived that target. All right, we just hopped out 10 yards. Let's see what happens. Hey, let me tell y'all what would have happened if, if Chris didn't say, hey, did you make your adjustment? I'm shooting at 60, I just shot at 50. Um, this is set up for 50. This, <laughs> this would have shot directly through the screen at that chronograph. I'd like to think that I would have caught it. Matter of fact, let me see what this is sitting at. 60.6. So guys, it doesn't matter what the, what the range on the target says. You're gonna be sighting in your bow in accordance with your chronograph, right? So like, because when you go to hunt, it's gonna be your chronograph, or I'm sorry, chronograph, your uh, range finder, your range finder is gonna be ranging the animal that you're gonna be shooting at. It's not gonna have 60 painted on it by the guy who set up these targets. So make sure when you like sight in your pins that you sight it in in accordance with what your range finder says. That's a pro tip from a non-pro. 
We'll call it we'll call it a common sense tip. How about that? Ooh, that was a little right. Anyways, we'll check it. it looked like it was a little right though. Yeah, I'm excited to hunt. I've been cooped up at work. Got a lot of paperwork, a lot of admin to do. Soon as this period of like soon as this as well, soon as I like get a little bit more time to schedule, it's back to the woods. I need to set up feeders on the Wahoo so I can pig hunt. Um, unless some of you folks who are complaining about the hogs and want hog stop to come here, you know, you could just let the privileged bow hunter come in your backyard and shoot some pigs for you. No need to poison our food or anything like that with hog stop. But anyways, that's the topic. That's a subject for another day. It didn't catch it. <sighs> Maybe if I got the chronograph over to where it should be. All right. All right, so the first one at 60, I was a couple inches right, but then I also had the chronograph kind of a couple inches left. So it didn't register that one. Let's give me more opportunity to talk about hog stop since I'm messing up this 60 yard group for some reason today. But I'm trying to figure out how the meat on the shelves is so thin. Uh, um, inflation is through the roof and they're like, hey, let's, uh, Let's throw some stuff out there to make sure that uh, no, nah, it was a, it's an era 76. Well, yeah, we running out of food, people running out of money and they're like, hey, throw the stuff out there to decrease the hog population so we can take away people's ability to be. I get it. It's on private land, but you crazy if, it, if you don't think it's going to affect public land hunting, too. So hashtag stop hog stop. If you want hog stop, I'll get a T-shirt. Man, I might even start calling myself the hog stopper, right? And then call me to come to your backyard. You won't even hear my bow go off because I'll make sure it's nice and silent and quiet with a heavy arrow. We'll take the pig out. All you gotta do is shoot a couple pigs and then they'll stop coming around. That's it. You don't gotta poison them. You don't gotta give them no male birth control. And then if those pigs with the male birth control that's got all, I'm assuming they're gonna have some more estrogen. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Y'all gonna hit me with the you're not a scientist or biologist or animal biologist or whatever. Um, I shoot one of those pigs because it makes it on the public land and then we're eating that. What does that do to my hormones? I don't know. I can't answer all these questions. All I know is people need more food and we're trying to stop food from reproducing. Don't make sense to me. Yeah, for some reason I'm shooting to the right. Which is definitely my form. That should be money. Money. Yeah, it's time for me to send my binos back in. The cup's falling off. They didn't gotten beat up, drugged through the mud. Time for me to use that vortex warranty. Uh, I can almost, I can see the three digits from here. I just can't see what they are. Oh, bro, that's nothing. 267, it was 270 at, uh, at um, 50 yards. Yeah, we'll take that. 267 feet per second. See what happens at 70. 70 yards, I did move my sight. All right. Should be money. Can't tell from here. Chris, it's time for a spotting scope. All right, here we go, 70 yards, 260 feet per second. I'm still good with that. Would I shoot an animal out this far? I don't know. You're gonna have to come leave a bunch of comments telling me that I shouldn't. <laughs> I've only said that because it helps the YouTube algorithm. Start getting hate mail. This is remnants from the last Lanai hunt. And then this one too, I'll tell you that story later though. How it's clean fletchings, but still dead deer. How far is this? Yeah, all of these per my rangefinder, which is no knock on the people who set it up at all because their rangefinder could say 80. And once again, it only matters what your rangefinder says because that's what you're gonna be hunting with. So I'm taking that to 81 because I'm getting 81 or 80.9. 
a little high on right. Uh, we'll see what happens. So at 80 yards, 254 feet per second, there's been a constant drop off at distance. However, I am okay with the drop off that I've seen. I'm actually more than okay. This uh, gave me a lot more confidence in my setup. Out of the bow, it was 285 feet per second because I'm shooting 560 grain arrow at uh, 31 and a quarter inch draw and about 81 pounds of draw. I guess I should probably like verify my specs. So I'll make sure I do that for y'all too. Hey, y'all pray for my chronograph out here that it don't get shot. All right, so it's set. I have to be somewhat accurate. Let me see. Hopefully this don't take too many attempts of me because I got to shoot somewhat accurate out here to get the arrow to fly over the chronograph in just the right spot so it selects speed. So I do got to get to my real job eventually. So hopefully this don't take too long. Okay. Hey, so I had been shooting Vortex's baseline um, range finder for the longest. Uh, finally upgraded to their Viper HD 3000. And the cool thing about this is it's actually seven times magnification from what I was used to with the uh, six time magnification. And then it gives you your yard readouts out to the 10th of a yard. So I had normally been shooting this target out here for just 100 yards flat, but it's actually 100.8 uh, 100 yards. So and now I have zero excuse if I miss. All right, so I'm gonna shoot two arrows out there and then we'll check. Like I said, hopefully I'm shooting well enough. That's one. Didn't hit the chronograph. <laughs> oh. Can you see him out there? Where we at? A little high, that's good. Better than a little low right now. Okay. I don't think that second one read on the chronograph then if I was that far right. Oh, we good, hey. All right. So here we got out of the bow from back there. I was shooting 285 feet per second. Here at 100 yards, I'm shooting 240 feet per second. Prayers of a righteous man avail of much. I took me a long time to save for this chronograph. I know for you rich folks, you know what I mean? It's a baseline chronograph. It's not the most expensive. You can buy that anytime, but uh, I was really worried about my chronograph, so it did not break. We are good to go. So there's other tests that you can do, like with different weights, arrow weights and all this and that and a third, but this is all about finding like the deepest details, the most intricate details about my setup. So when I'm making decisions, when I'm hunting, um, maybe if somebody sends me a bunch of like different arrow weights and arrow spines and somebody sends me a chronograph, I'll do the same test. Um, with a bunch of different stuff. But um, for now, yeah, it's just all about like figuring out what my setup can do. So right out of the boat, 285 feet per second. When you get to 100 yards, it's 240. I lost 45 feet per second out to 100 yards. In my mind, that's pretty good because, hey, Krista, I'm pretty sure your boat chrono is at 240 feet per second right out of the boat. <laughs> if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, um, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. If you don't know how to spell the channel by now, it's P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E-D. I know y'all know how to spell Bowhunter. We love y'all. Peace.